Welcome on my channel. I have a lot of inductors like this and I have disassembled one of them. This is the core, but of course you can use some other one and I'll show you the dimensions of mine. They are 36 and a half. Inside it is 22 and the height is almost 16. Let's look on the diagram. It's very simple. We are using IR2153 and it is push pull. We will convert 12 volts into bipolar 35 volts. We can use such devices in car amplifiers when we need bipolar and high voltage. I have already made printed circuit board and if you want to make the same, you can download it in the description. And now let's calculate the transformer. A lot of years I use this program, it is in Russian language, but it is very simple. If you need more information about this program, just uh, let me know in the video comments. Just select the core from the base or you can add dimensions of yours, the frequency, the dead time, the RDS one from your transistors. I'm using IRF3205 transistors and they have 8 milliohms. The input power will be from 10 to 14 volts DC. And I want to remind you that we are using push-pull. Now we don't have any stabilization. Output voltage is 35, 5 amps and we have bipolar output. Now push calculate and we have the result. Primary winding is 4 plus 4 turns and the output is 14 plus 14 turns. And don't forget about wire section. Now we need to measure the length of the wire, so I'll take one wire and make four turns. Make it on the whole core. It's not so easy to make it on the camera. Now we have four turns. It is one, two, three and four. We take a little bit more and now unwind. And now we know the lengths. I cut a lot of wires to the right lengths. I wrapped electrical PVC tape on the core, but it is not a good idea. I make it only in the video, but I recommend you to use Captain Tape. I have glued the wires, so it will be easy to wind. I used rubber glue. After that, primary winding looks like this. It's easy to wrap and pretty neat. After that I have added three layers of Captain Tape. Separate primary coil into two parts, like this. Now we have two beginnings and two ends of the coils. Now we need to connect the end of the one coil with the beginning from the another. And of course check with the multimeter if you have separated it correctly. We don't hear any signal now and we have separated it correctly. There is no connection. And now we hear the signal. It is the beginning and the end of the one part. And here is the another part. 
the signal is, but here no signal. We have separated it correctly. And now connect the beginning of one coil with the end of the another coil. We will have three ends. I wrapped the PVC tape, but I remind you that it is not a good idea. I make it only in the video. And we have already made the primary coil. Now we will make the secondary coil and I will use 04 wires. I have a lot of used wire. You can use it, but make sure that the isolation is not damaged. My secondary coil looks like this. We have 14 turns with 14 wires. And we need to separate it the same way as the primary coil. 7 plus 7. Looks nice and I hope it will work fine. We have completely made the transformer and I have added to the PCB. It holds strongly on the primary and secondary wires. Now we need the inductors. You can make it by yourself, but I will use used from the PC power supply. This one looks nice and it will work. Here. And the second one I'll use like this. It has two wires. So we can use it. Two beginnings and two ends. I soldered the whole board and you can see that it is extremely simple. Only one relatively complicated thing is the transformer. If you have soldered everything in the right way, this power supply needs no tune. It will work. Such simple inverters are recommended for the beginners. So let's test it with the input power. I'll connect it to the power supply 12 volts. And now let's check the output voltage. Ninety one volts, forty five volts, and uh, forty five. That's good. It works fine. It works. Now let's check with the oscilloscope what signals are on the gates of the MOSFETs. Looks nice. It can be better, but it looks nice. And now, between the signals, we have the dead time. It works correctly. That's good. Let's see the one signal. The bigger one. It's not the best, but it will work. It's time to test it with the electronic load. I have connected two wires to the input to minimize the power loose. I have added radiator on the MOSFETs and connected output to the electronic load. And now, see the results. Turning on. My power supply have only 12 amps on output. Now let's check it. We don't have any stabilization, so under the load output voltage will decrease. It's normal. 1 amp, almost one and a half. We have 100 watts, 117, 
that's good. You can see the input and the output power. But now we are limited with the output power of my power supply. Only 12 amps. Radiator on the MOSFETs are almost cold. It works and it works good. For such a simple circuit it works very nice. Here is the power consumption without load. We have 7580 milliamps. You can adjust the power consumption using the frequency. I want to take out more power from this inverter, so I will use my power supply and the battery. The battery is not fully charged now, you can see it, but that's enough for test. So. Almost 1 amp. One hundred watts, one and a half amp, and almost two amps. That's good, that's good. And now we are limited with my power supply. I don't recommend you to take out more than two hundred watts with only two MOSFETs. Today we have made a simple inverter, very simple, and it works. You have seen everything yourself. If you have questions about the assembly, write comments. That's all for today. Like it or dislike, subscribe to the channel. I wish you luck and good mood. Bye bye.